Today we will learn about testing of hypothesis and that too in the large, large sample uh, scenario. So we will be dealing with the large sample test. Also we will be uh, looking uh, into another test called uh, the chi-square test for variance. So let's move on to the large sample test. Now in st statistical hypothesis testing uh, we select a test statistic and we divide its range of variation into two regions the acceptance and the rejection region without knowing the pdf or the probability distribution function of a test statistic it is very difficult to find the probability that uh, where it falls in a particular region so it is very important to know the distribution of a test statistic now fortunately it is known that when the sample is large most of the statistics are normally distributed that is when n is greater than 30 that is the sample size is great when sample size is greater than 30 there we say that it is a large sample now we will first consider the test for normal mean or test for single mean in the case where sigma is known now as we know that there are five main steps for uh, a testing of hypothesis so our first step is to set up a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis so now in this scenario the null hypothesis is h naught mu is equal to mu naught and the alternative hypothesis are h1 mu greater than mu naught h1 mu less than mu naught or h1 mu not equal to mu naught so this is the first step in the testing now in the second step what we have to do is we have to define a level of significance or a significance level S no so with uh, regards to this particular test that is test, test for normal mean or test for single mean the level of significance is alpha now the third step is to find out a critical value so how do we find out a critical value we find a critical value based on the h1 and alpha now in this case uh, the critical value is given as z alpha minus z alpha or z alpha by 2 with regards to h1 so if it is h1 mu greater than mu naught the critical value will be as z alpha h1 mu if it is h1 mu less than mu naught then the critical value will be minus z alpha or if h1 is mu naught equal to mu naught then the critical value will be z alpha by 2 now our next procedure is to set up an appropriate test statistic now a test statistic to with regards to this particular test is given over here and that is z is equal to x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma by root 10 now here the test statistic z follows a normal distribution where x bar is said to be the sample mean mu naught the population mean and sigma the population standard deviation and n is the sample size now the final step is the conclusion now how do we conclude we conclude by comparing the value of the test statistic z with that of the critical value and we arrive at a conclusion so let's have a look at what kind of conclusions we arrive at so uh, one kind of conclusion is that we reject h naught in the case when the alternative hypothesis is mu not equal to mu naught if the calculated value of z is greater than z alpha by 2 that is modulus z now here i am emphasizing on the modulus because i am not considering the negative or positive value over here now in the second scenario it is it can be that we reject h naught if modulus z is greater than z alpha that is when the um, alternative hypothesis h1 is mu greater than mu naught the third scenario is when h1 mu less than mu naught then we reject h naught if modulus z is less than minus z alpha now that was the test for uh, single mean now we come to the second test that is a test for equality of means or difference in mean now the procedure over here is also the same first we have to set up the null and the alternative hypothesis now in this case the null hypothesis h naught is mu 1 equal to mu 2 
the alternative hypothesis are given over here as h1 mu1 greater than mu2 h1 mu1 less than mu2 or h1 mu1 not equal to mu2 now here also we have to the fix a level of significance and i fix it as alpha now the third step is based on h1 and alpha i will have to obtain the critical value so here there is no change in the critical values that is z alpha or minus z alpha or z alpha by 2 now i have to uh, set an appropriate test statistic so the test statistic over here is z is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 now here x1 bar and x2 bar are sample means of n1 and n2 now the conclusion is that you have to compare the value of the test statistic with that of the critical value that we got and the conclusions can be h1 mu1 not equal to mu2 then we have to reject h0 if z is greater than z alpha by 2 h1 mu1 greater than mu2 then we have to reject h0 if modulus z is less greater than z alpha and if uh, the alternate hypothesis that is mu1 is less than mu2 then we have to reject h0 if modulus z is less than minus z alpha so these are the conclusion based on the conclusion we can arrive at an um, answer okay so that was test for equality of means or difference in the mean now next is the test for single proportion now here again i would like to repeat that the procedure is same set up the null and the alternative hypothesis so since it is a single proportion the null hypothesis is given as h naught p is equal to p naught then a corresponding um, alternative hypothesis is given as follows now again the second uh, step is to fix a level of significance as alpha based on h1 and alpha we have to obtain the critical value and the critical value is z alpha or minus z alpha or z alpha by 2 now you have to set up an appropriate test statistic and the test statistic over here is given as z is equal to p minus p naught divided by root of p naught q naught divided by n now what is p now you might be wondering what is p now p is nothing but the sample proportion of units possessing a particular attribute in a sample of size of n now p naught is the value of the population proportion and q naught is equal to 1 minus p naught so if p naught is given it is easy to find out q naught you can substitute that value in your test statistic and find out z now as usual our conclusion so you have to compare the value of the test statistic that we got right now and uh, we have to compare it with the critical value and arrive at a conclusion so one of the three of these could be our conclusion so but that will be according to our alternative hypothesis so now i'm not going to repeat this because it's almost similar to what we have studied just before okay i hope you understood uh, all these three um, test now we are going to study about chi square test for variance so uh, again the format is same now we have to set up a null hypothesis now it is chi square test for variance so as uh, the name of the test you can see the null hypothesis still right now we were dealing with mean and proportion now we are going to deal with variance so h naught is sigma is equal to sigma naught now its corresponding hypothesis are given that is alternative hypothesis again we will have to fix a level of significance that is alpha based on h1 and alpha we will have to obtain the value or uh, that is the critical value now here i would like to say that critical values are alpha squ uh, chi square alpha or minus chi square alpha or it could be a uh, chi square alpha by 2 now you have to set up an appropriate test statistic now here the test statistic is given as chi square is equal to n square divided by sigma naught square and why uh, this follows a chi square distribution now the conclusion is that you have to compare the test statistic with a critical value that is found out and again these are the conclusions now these values can be found out from the chi square tables So I hope you all understood uh, what is uh, testing uh, in the case of uh, large samples. Now we will have a look at uh, the testing when it comes to small sample in another video. Thank you.